All right, hi everybody, John Meadows here, and today we're going to talk about training arms, specifically how hard you should be training your arms. There's uh, some nuances, it's a little different training your arms as compared to training, say, your legs or your chest. So that's what we're gonna do. How hard should you train your arms? Let's get to work. All right, so the first thing I wanna cover is, and it's, um, it's simple, but it's, it's very important. What should you train first? So should you do your biceps first or your triceps first? And this is key to how hard you should train. If your elbows take forever to get warmed up and they're pretty fragile, I would suggest first of all training your biceps because then when you go to train your triceps, you'll do a couple sets and the blood will move in there and your elbows will be warmed up quick. And probably most of you have done that and you're like, oh wow, it's amazing how quickly they're warmed up. If you tend to have problems with your elbows here you know, tendonitis, uh, medial epicondylitis, lateral epicondylitis. If you get like a lot of inflammation there and it takes forever to warm up, then train your triceps first because then when you go to train your biceps, the blood will go in there and it'll be warmed up real quick. So that's something that relates more to health, but it's hard to train hard when you have all this pain and it takes forever to warm up. So for me, it takes me longer to get my elbows warmed up. If I start with triceps, it literally takes me seven, eight sets before they feel good. So I go ahead and I train my biceps first, which is what I'm gonna to do today, and then triceps. Now, we're gonna cover some other ideas today, you know, alternating a bicep and tricep exercise, but that's just one little key thing I wanted to point out. Um, now, so we're gonna to go to our first exercise, and it's gonna be a regular barbell curl. You can use an easy bar. Actually, I'll probably use a straight bar, but you can use an easy bar, whatever feels good on your wrist. So here's one of the differences. When you train your biceps, I do not believe in trying to curl massive amounts of weight. Um, if you saw my leg video, we did squats. If you saw my chest video, we did uh, incline barbell press. And I talked about working up and getting a little stronger and a little stronger, more reps. I'm not so confident about that on biceps because so many people get tendonitis in their arms. You talk to anybody who's trained their biceps really, really heavy, they're gonna tell you eventually it got to the point where it's just tendonitis. I would much rather you use a moderate weight, use very strict form, maybe a little cheating at the end, but basically very strict form that you can control. And the idea is to now pump the blood in there. So like with a compound movement, what do I always tell you guys? I tell you to take three minutes between your sets, take your time so you're strong. I don't want you to use that approach on biceps. I don't want you to do a set of curls and then you just sit there for three minutes. What I would rather you do is pick up the pace, uh, moderate weight, a minute between your sets, okay? So that's kind of number one. So we're gonna go ahead and start curling, but that's the first thing I want you to think of. Okay, with biceps, now I'm gonna lighten up the weight a little. I'm gonna pick up the pace because I wanna jam a lot of blood into the muscle. Okay, so I'm good and warmed up here. I'm gonna start with this curl. I'm gonna be doing somewhere around eight to 10 reps. Um, again, it's a moderate weight. I'm only gonna take a minute between sets. Um, in terms of how close you should be to failure, you know, I would say right at that, right at that line. Um, it's moderate weight, you're not slinging heavy weight, so I'm a little more inclined to go closer to failure. So it'll be failure or a rep short of failure. Um, try to keep really good form. So don't be, don't be afraid of getting real close to failure on these, okay? And we're doing three sets. So three sets where we get pretty close to failure. Ugh. So on that one, I got eight. On the first one, I got, it was 10 or 11. So you're gonna lose a few reps when you're only taking a minute break. That's okay, we're just jamming blood in there. Why don't you get a couple? Eight again, so that's only 70 pounds. The most I ever go up to is probably 90. Um, we did a real heavy back workout yesterday. That's another point I should mention, is if you're worried about heavy weight, think about when you train your back, how heavy you go, you're using your arms. When you train your chest real heavy, you're using your triceps. 
that's another reason why I don't worry about going crazy with how much weight I'm lifting on arms. Because that's another thing that makes them prone to getting inflammation, I think, tendonitis. Because you're already moving that joint with a heavy weight. So three sets, that was it for exercise number one. All right, so we're on to exercise number two. It's a pinwheel curl. You gotta get your brachialis and brachial radialis. So how hard should you do these? Again, I want you to come pretty close to failure. Um, we're working on a really good squeezing contraction. We're not throwing up a bunch of crazy heavy weight. So it's a little safer, again, to go closer to failure with a moderate weight. Again, we're only gonna take a minute between sets. So we're gonna do pinwheel curls now. Big squeeze. Okay. So pretty much failure. 30 or 60 seconds. See, we're going at a real fast pace. We're pumping them up. Now you can do, um, you can alternate arms if you want. Um, and this goes for any bicep exercise if you're using dumbbells. You can do one side if you want. You can alternate. If you alternate, you're going to get, you're probably going to get a few more reps because one arm's resting while the other one's going. But the other side is if you're doing them all at once, probably a little bit more tension, a little bit more pump and blood flow. Either way is fine, as long as you're coming close to failure, which is what we're doing here. All right, so now we're on our third set here. Now, the high intensity techniques, how hard do you go? Well, I like to throw it in on the last set of the second exercise usually. So <clears throat> you're gonna go to failure, and then we're gonna hit some partials, so you're only come up halfway. It's gonna keep driving blood into the muscle, um, continue to create tension. So I'm gonna go to failure, then I'm gonna hit partials on this third set. Okay, now we go to partials. Uh, 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 six, six partials. Big squeeze. Partials. Crazy blood flow. Ooh. That's what we want. We want tons and tons of blood in there. So the first two sets were pretty much a failure. The third set, I want you to add in a high intensity technique. So in this case, we're gonna do partials. So now your biceps should be pretty full of blood and we're gonna move on to our third exercise. Okay, preacher curl. So. Your third exercise, you want to stretch out your buys good. And as you notice, the weight's not real heavy. It doesn't need to be heavy. They're pretty fatigued. And I'm pretty much going to failure again. So it's a light to moderate weight. And we're going to failure. And even though I say lightweight, if you guys think about it, it's not really light because I can only get eight reps. So this heavy, moderate, and light, it's all kind of relative, you know, to, to your state of fatigue at the time. So, um, we're gonna do three sets here now. Now, when you get to this third exercise, now I actually slow it down. There's a lot of blood in there. And when you're using an exercise that emphasizes the stretch, um, if you get tired, you, you lose all your reps. So we have to slow down now. Now we're taking two, three minutes on this exercise here, because again, we're working the stretch. So um, slow it down now. Here comes our second set. Again, pretty much when we go to failure. All right, so we're on our third set. Now, again, I want to use a high-intensity technique. So I think a drop set, probably I wouldn't get much out of it. I'd have to drop the weight down to nothing on this. 
plus or set, I'm probably not going to get a lot of reps either because of the fatigue. So I think what makes sense here is some four straps. So I'm going to get as many reps on my own as I can, and then Brett's going to help me with about four more reps. So our high intensity technique on this one is going to be four straps. <clears throat> Slow. Oh. I was trying to go slow. <laughs> so they are shot, they're fatigued. Whew, that was nine sets. Pretty much all of them were the failure. Two of them were beyond failure. That may seem like a ton, especially compared to other body parts. But remember, we're using a moderate weight. We're not using some big compound exercise. Um, so I'm okay with that. So how would I adjust this for somebody who's maybe natural or, or not natural? I like to think that somewhere between 12 and 20 sets is about right for just about everybody. The guys who are natural probably need to be closer to that 12 to 15 sets a week. If you did this, it'd be nine sets right there. So then what you could do on your back workout, you could tack on another, say, three sets of buys uh, to get your buys to 12 sets. Um, you do it that way, or you could pull your sets down here. And so we did three, three, and three on our sets. You could do two, two, and two, so six. And so you could do this twice a week. Um, but if you figured this out to where you do about 12 sets a week, you're probably about right. Um, if you're not natural, you can add a little bit more volume nine sets a day, you can do another, another workout like this. So you get upwards around 18 sets. Um, but again, notice I didn't say naturals, you can't train that hard. Notice I didn't say that, that's not what matters. You need to do those, you need to do those sets really hard. You just need to be able to recover. You just need the volume to be manageable. So that's it for buys. Now we're gonna head over to tries. Um, we've already done one warm up set. This is the second warm up set and my elbows feel great. Like, the, like I was mentioning at the beginning of the video, the blood just boom, works right around, elbows are warm. So now instead of needing eight sets to warm up, basically this is my last warm up and then we're gonna be ready to go. All right, so now remember, you've done chest, you've trained, you know, you've done a lot of heavy pressing, you've exposed your triceps, even though in a secondary sort of way, you've still put them with, you still put a heavy load on them. So. Again, we're gonna to try to dry blood in your triceps. You've already got blood in your biceps. I want as much blood in your arms as, as you can. When I think of how hard should you train your arms, I think of how much blood can I put in there. So that's what we're gonna do in exercise number one. We're doing a, a dual trope, or dual uh, rope push down here. And my goal is blood flow. I'm gonna bump my reps up a little though. Now we're gonna go 10 or 12 reps. We're on the biceps, it was more like you know, eight to 10. So I do like to go a little higher repetition wise to start with triceps to get even more blood in there. And try to get around failure again here. Nothing wrong with going to failure on triceps. So try to get, try to get close to failure. So I lost two reps, which is cool. When you're only taking 60 second breaks, you're gonna lose some reps, but we're still pushing the muscle fibers really hard, going to failure. So that's what we do on that. That was a second set. Mm. 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 Oh. I think I lost a few more reps. That's okay. That was a lot of hard work, failure. That was good. So one thing I want to mention too, it's your exercise selection. I, I've done some exercises today that maybe you have an exercise that you feel better. And that's okay. 
find exercises that you really, particularly for arm, well, any body part, but particularly for arms, because we're going for, for blood flow. Find exercises that you really feel a hard contraction. You can feel the blood going into muscle. Find those exercises that work for you. That's actually more important than doing what I'm doing because you may do one of these exercises and you may not even feel it. You may, you may have another exercise that you feel really well though. So that's key with arms. So you gotta find exercises where you can really feel the muscle contracting, the muscle engorging with blood, as opposed to just moving the weight. I just don't think uh, just moving the weight approach is gonna work with real good for arms. It's just my opinion. All right, everything's warmed up real good. And uh, now we're going to our second exercise. We're going to do a dumbbell lying extension. Now your triceps are obviously bigger than your biceps. Well, at least they should be. Um, so now that three sets, we're going to take it to four. We're going to do three normal sets. And then we're going to finish with um, actually a drop set. So we're still going to keep that high intensity technique in just like we did on biceps on the second exercise. So uh, we're going to do three sets here. The fourth set's going to be a drop set. Uh, my set. Uh. Uh. All right, so that was our drop set. That was our fourth set. Um, those feel unbelievable. Those feel great. Good stretch at the bottom. So that's exercise number two. Okay, now we're on our third and final exercise. We're gonna do dips. You could use a dip machine if you want. Um, just, just happens to be the machine we have here. Normally when I do dips, you see me doing them for chest with uh, my elbows going out uh, wide. Now my form's gonna be a little different. Now instead of my elbows going out wide, they're going to be kind of traveling behind me, so it's more tricep. I personally prefer to use an assistance type machine when I'm doing dips for triceps, just because I feel it's smoother, it's easier on my uh, shoulder joint, my elbow joint. Whereas if I'm doing it for chest, I'd rather just do it with body weight. I don't really need to help. But um, so we're going to do three sets to failure. Then we're going to attack on another high intensity set at the end. So start off with straight sets here. Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> Damn. They're a little tough after that drop set over there. <laughs> All right, so these are really tough. Um, doing them last. You could have actually done these second and then those dumbbells that we just did third either way. Um, so the fourth set is gonna be a cluster set. I've only been getting six to eight reps, which is actually what I want uh, for your triceps on this exercise. So now we're gonna finish with a cluster set. We got three sets of about six, seven reps. Now I'm gonna get probably six, rest 20 seconds, get another three or four, rest 20 seconds, then maybe get another three or four. And uh, that should put the finishing touch on. seconds. That'll 
do it. All right, so that's triceps. Uh, we did four, four, we did 11 sets for triceps. So for naturals, you're probably gonna wanna take out one of the working sets uh, for each one of those exercises, bring you down to about 11 sets, but we still want 14 uh, for the week. You know, we said we wanted about 12 for biceps, we want about 14 for triceps, a little bit more. So that would leave you with three extra sets. Where do you need to put those? I would put those at the end of your chest workout. Get a little extra volume in. The other alternative method you could do is just do seven sets twice a week. So you could scale what we down today, did down today a little bit to like seven sets and do that twice. You got a couple different options. We're gonna put them up here on the screen so you can see. Um, those of you who are enhanced, um, so you're gonna probably wanna go upwards from that 14 sets uh, that we did today. You're probably gonna wanna do something like 18, um, somewhere around in there. So you could do what we did, did, what we did today and then add on another four sets, say, after you train your chest. Um, or you could just scale down the volume a little bit, what we did today, and just do that twice a week. Again, we're gonna put it up here in a box after the video so you can see it. You, you have a little bit more clarity in what we're doing. So if you like this, how hard do you train series, make sure you check out the whole series. 